Hi, I'm Peter Sibelius, the founder of MedicalDeviceHQ.com. This video is a part of my online course on risk management for medical devices and ISO 4971. If you like this video and you have colleagues who would want to suffer less in risk management workshops, share this video in your network on LinkedIn. Let's get started. In this video, we'll be talking about FMEA and risk management according to ISO 4901. On the one hand, we'll look at risk management done according to ISO 4901, and on the other hand, FMEA and process FMEA. If you have been looking into the documentation of your company, there is a good chance that you've come across the term FMEA. Now, I don't want you to sit through the whole course wondering what FMEA is in comparison to risk management, which should be done then according to this course, which is why I will be bringing it up here to highlight some of the major differences. And if we speak about FMEA, we need to know what FMEA means, not just the words, but the method. Before getting into that, let me introduce you to one of my personal principles. My general principle that I always try to employ is to use the terms and concepts that are available in the regulations and standards. So with that in mind, let's look at FMEA. FMEA stands for Failure Modes, Effects Analysis. Did you know that there is a standard for FMEA? It is called IEC 60812. When I refer to FMEA, I mean FMEA as it is defined in the IEC 60812 standard. And why do I do that? Before answering that, let me point out that there is nothing requiring you to call things by certain names from standards or regulations. But if there is a well-defined term or concept, it sure is a good idea to use it rather than trying to come up with your own terms. FMEA would be one of those examples. There is a standard that defines what FMEA is, so why not use it? The advantage of using st the standards terms and concepts are that someone else has done the work for you on defining it. In fact, it's not only someone, but a group of international experts that have done it. It's likely that more people have read the standards definitions and concepts than your own homemade definitions, and aligning terms, concepts, and definitions to simplify trade and working together is what standards are all about. And this principle applies to all areas where you can find good terms in standards and regulations. Now, you or your company might be doing ISO 4971 risk management and call it FMEA, or you might be doing a hybrid between ISO 4971 risk management and FMEA. You can call these method methods whatever you like, but trust me when I say, Life becomes easier when you use the standards names. Next up, let's look at what FMEA is in the standard. This is what FMEA could look like. In this example, you can see a design FMEA or DFMEA. The DFMEA looks at components and what failure of such components would lead to. In this example, you can see how design choices or design failures leads to a breakdown of system performance. The risk is measured using an RPN number which is short for risk priority number. The highest ranking risks should be addressed first by mitigations, and just as in the case of ISO 4971, the residual risk is estimated again at the end using the same technique as before. Here is another example. In this case, it is a process FMEA or PFMEA. In this case, instead of looking at how parts of the design could fail, we look at how the production process could fail. Please note the PD which is an abbreviation of probability of detection or detectability. This is a measure of how easy it is to detect the failure and prevent it from being released and then actually having an impact on the reliability of the product. The more likely the failure is to be detected, the lower the PD score, meaning the risk would receive lower priority on the RPN scale if you're likely to detect the failure, which makes perfect sense. Sometimes we can implement really efficient in-process controls or final tests that will prevent a future user from experiencing the consequence of our process failures. This brings down the residual PD score, lowering the residual RPN number. Having looked at these examples, you may have noticed that FMEA starts with details or components. You would be looking at how specific components or process steps could fail. And there was no mention of harm in these FMEAs, were there? And since we've only looked at failure, risks relating to normal use have not been included. Let's compare this with ISO 4901 risk management. Risk management according to ISO 4901 includes risks both from normal use 
reasonably foreseeable misuse, and fault conditions, whereas FMEA only looks at risks relating to failure. This means that ISO 4901 would include, for example, the risk of infection when using a urinary catheter. As you may know, you could get such an infection even if the catheter was used exactly as prescribed. Nothing was broken and the device was sterile when opening the packaging, you can still get an infection. This means that you get the infection during normal use and it is a risk that should be addressed. It may not mean that we can reduce that risk, but what we can do is to inform the users of this residual risk so that they can make an informed decision on whether they want to use the product or not. This risk with urinary tract infection would never be captured when using the FMEA according to the FMEA standard. If you remember the hazard traceability matrix that I've showed you as an example of what risk management is about, You've seen that we started with hazards on the left-hand side in the table. Hazards are potential sources of harm. The good thing about starting your risk management work with hazards is that in most cases, you can identify the most important risks without doing any detailed design whatsoever. In fact, you're likely to be able to come up with quite a few important risks already in the conceptual stage of product development. Because what are typical hazards, potential sources of harm, it could be viruses or bacteria, it could be electricity, sharp edges or toxic residues from production. And these hazards can be identified at a very early stage. And finding risks at an early stage usually saves a lot of money compared to finding them and having to mitigate them later on in a product development project. Or even worse, mitigate them after you've released your product to market. Well, that's not a place you want to be. On the other hand, if you're going to be looking at components or process steps in production, it requires that the design or process in general is quite mature. And this, by definition, will happen late in your product development process, resulting in a late start in risk management. Another major difference between ISO 4901 risk management and FMEA is that the severities are rated differently. ISO 4901 will be looking at the severity based on the harm to people. Whereas FMEA looks at severity from a system performance point of view, meaning that a small loss of function would be a low severity and a total breakdown of system performance is a high severity. Even if the partial loss of function kills a few patients, it's still low severity because FMEA does normally not look at harm. And if you identify risks that will kill people, they should have the highest severity in risk management when done according to the regulatory requirements in ISO 4971. Now, the last major differences that I would like to bring up is that ISO 4901 risk management is a very comprehensive approach that will address and manage all risks related to a medical device. There are some minor exceptions to this, so using the word all is a very strong expression, but as a rule of thumb, it does hold water. FMEA, on the other hand, is a reliability tool, which by definition does not include all risks, but if the safety of your system is dependent on reliability, for example, as in the case of a life-supporting medical device, using FMEA may be a good idea to achieve reliability and thereby also safety. So now you've seen the major differences between ISO 4901 risk management and FMEA according to the IEC 60812 standard. It is important to remember that if you only use FMEA, you do not meet the requirements of the ISO 4901 standard. And this in turn usually means that you do not meet the requirements of the medical device regulation, nor are you likely to meet FDA's expect expectations on risk management in the US. Should you not be using FMEA then? Well, there are situations when it makes perfect sense. Remember, the purpose of, FMA, of FMEA is to improve the reliability of a design or process. If your product safety depends on reliability, by all means, you can or maybe even should use FMEA to feed risks into your risk management process according to ISO 4971. Imagine a ventilator or a defibrillator or a pacemaker. For all these products, the safety is dependent on reliability of the product. And when it is, you should consider a risk identification technique which uses a bottom-up approach. And that will improve reliability. FMEA would be one such technique you could be using. Do you know someone who would benefit from having more efficient risk management workshops? Why not doing that person a favor by sharing this video to your LinkedIn network? People might just thank you for it.
And speaking of LinkedIn, do follow Medical Device HQ on LinkedIn. There is a link to our company page in the description below. Just a reminder, if you would like to take the full course on risk management and ISO 14901, you can register for my courses through the link in the video description. Thanks for watching. I'm Peter Sibelius, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.